Hello and welcome to the new book releases for the week of October 14th. I'm Morgan. If this is your first time here, we will talk about books of a few different genres and there's going to be timestamps so you can click to whichever one might be your favorite. This week, we're going to be starting out with some sci-fi though. On Vicious Worlds by Bethany Jacobs is book two in the Kingdom Trilogy. The first book says a dangerous cat and mouse quest for revenge, an empire that spans star systems built on the bones of a genocide, a carefully hidden secret that could collapse worlds, hunted by three women with secrets of their own. On a dusty backwater planet, occasional thief June Ironway has gotten her hands on the score of a lifetime, a secret that could raise the kingdom, the ruling power of the galaxy. The first book was These Born Burning Stars which sounds really cool, and will one day start this series. Then a more high-tech sci-fi set here on Earth is going to be Lifers by Keith G. McWalter. In the year 2050, the man known as Zen is on the run from the consequences of his greatest creation, an artificial genome that wildly increases the human lifespan. His Methuselah gene has gone viral, and he's being hunted by Adelie, a semi-retired CIA biowarfare specialist who hopes to find a way to reverse the genome's effects before it's too late. This is radically increasing the human lifespan, and there's whole other departments of government being formed to deal with the fact of people are not, you know, dying, and younger people are not getting things because older people are still here. It's a whole new sort of age warfare and... Moving on to more of a dystopian one is The Ancients by John Larson. A young boy and his older sisters find themselves suddenly and utterly alone. Orphaned in an abandoned fishing village, their food supplies dwindling, they set out across a breathtaking yet treacherous wilderness in search of the last of their people. Down the coast, raiders deliver the children's mother along with the rest of their human cargo to the last port city of a waning empire. Determined to reunite with her family, she plots her escape while her fellow captives plan open revolt. Our next one is a video game tied in story. The Endless Universe already has three game titles. I don't remember when they came out. They came out like a while ago, I do believe. But now they're having a book following a whole new character and just in a little part of this universe. It's called Shadow of the Endless by Stephen Gaskell. Persecuted for worshiping the Endless, an ancient galactic spanning race of godlike power who disappeared eons past, the pilgrims escaped the world of Raya almost a century ago fleeing the despotic rule of the United Empire in a dozen spacefaring fleets. Young pilgrim Siwa Ezi wants nothing more than to become a caver and head into the depths of the deserted moons, asteroids, and worlds to secure whatever the fleet needs, precious res resources, endless relics, even dust. However, when she discovers a strange device deep in the ice of the comet they shelter on, it becomes clear dark forces are afoot. Selected for the leadership role at the Ceremony of Duties, she must re reassess her life beginning with finding the traitor in their ranks who threatens her entire fleet's existence it said lost civilization so that already hooked me even though i have no idea what was going on in the games and hopefully maybe that would intrigue you as well either you're a fan of the games or you're not just to try it out moving on into ya books we have another dystopian starting one maybe the shadow road by j k d kershemeyer when the monsters came, the power went out. Towns and cities became darkened ruins and terrified survivors fled west, trailed by blitz, dragon-like creatures screeching down from the sky and shrouded in lightning delivering death. The old world is ending, but not all hope is lost. Our next one is set more in real life and deals with the mental pressures we put on each other and children. Giddy Barber Explodes in Eleven by Dina Havernack. I do believe it was written by a teacher too. Giddy Barber knows with certainty she's going to become a mechanical engineer. What she doesn't know is the last time she smiled. With her parents overworked and unavailable, it falls to Giddy to make sure her siblings stay on track. But she's exhausted. When you're the person everyone else turns to, what do you do when you hit a wall? We'll move on into fantasy. The first one up is a sequel to An Inheritance of Magic. This is An Instruction in Shadow by Benedict Jacka. The first book was about the wealthy seem to exist in a different glittering world from the rest of us, almost as if by magic. Stephen Oakwood is a young man on the edge of this hidden world. He has talent and potential, but turning that potential into magical power takes money, opportunity, and training. All Stephen has is a minimum wage job and a cat. All you really need is a cat, I'm sure, and everything else will fall in line. Moving on, though, to a cozy is Sorcery and Small Magics by Maga Ducey. Nope. Pretty sure I really missed that. 
Leo Vander Lovage is a master of small magics. He can summon butterflies with a song or turn somebody's hair pink with, by snapping his fingers. Though such minor charms don't earn him much respect, anything more elaborate always blows up in his face. And so Leo vowed long ago never to use powerful magic again. That is, until a mishap with a forbidden spell binds Leo to obey the commands of his longtime rival, Sebastian Grimm. I love their names because his name is Lovage and he does all these cute like little charms. And then Mr. Grimm, his rival, is supposed to be staunch and I think grumpy. It just, that was perfect naming con conveniences. Mm -hmm. Moving into romanticy, we have Never Keep by Carolyn Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. Yes, this is the start of a new series in their same world called Signs of the Zodiac. Sins of the Zodiac. However, it does seem that from earlier reviews, you might could read this one first as your entry into this world. That it just, it would still work okay to do that. The dragons are lost. The elements are at war. Enlisting isn't optional. And I'm falling for a man who wants me dead. It says she's one of like two fae that could do something, but she was born on the wrong month. Never keep sounds to also be like maybe... A villainy school? I'm not sure. I don't want to read too much of the description in case it does still relate to things that happened at the end of the other series. But yet the reviewer said you could read this alone. I don't know. We'll just move on though to romance. How My Neighbors Stole Christmas by Megan Quinn. Every Kringle and Kringle Town celebrated Christmas a lot, but Cole Black on Whistler Lane unfortunately did not. As his fellow citizens decorate their quaint town, brimming with carols and glad tidings, Cole wants nothing more than to hibernate the winter away. But his dreamy plans are thwarted when his Christmas nemesis, Story Taylor, moves in next door to care for her aunt Cindy. Immediately, the neighbor turns his life into a real nightmare before Christmas, especially when she decides to enter the town Christmas Kringle contest in honor of Cindy. And better yet, Story is determined to win. That sounds like a interesting cute holiday romance we move on though into fiction with blood test by charles baxter in this fresh take on love and trouble in america brock hobson an insurance salesman and sunday school teacher finds his equilibrium disturbed by the results of a predictive blood test baxter a master storyteller brings us a gradually building roller coaster narrative and a protagonist who is impertinent searching and hilariously relatable from his good-as-gold gentle girlfriend to the macho subcontractor guy that his ex-wife left him for, not to mention his well-raised teenage kids, now exploring... Oh. The secondary characters in Brock's life all contribute meaningfully to the drama as increasing challenges to his sense of self and purpose crash over him. Moving from there, though, we have Polston by Neil Stevenson. This is the first installment in his bomb light cycle. Okay, he's calling it a cycle. This is the series. It is a historical fiction. It follows the early life of enigmatic Don Ray Bjornberg, born in, Ameri in the American West to a clan of cowboy, cowboy ar anarchists. Why can't I talk? Don is raised in Lening Leningrad after the Russian Revolution by her Russian father, a party line Leninist who rechristens her Aurora. She spends her early years in Russia, but then grows up as a teenager in Montana before being drawn into the gun running and revolution in the streets of Washington, D.C. during the depths of the Great Depression. When a surprising revelation about her past puts her in the crosshairs of the U.S. authorities, Dawn returns to Russia, where she is groomed as a spy by the organization that later becomes the KGB. Our last book for the week, then, is The Waiting by Michael Conley. This is book six in the Ballard and Bosch series, following Detective Renee Ballard and his character from very long-running series, Harry Bosch. LAPD detective Renee Ballard tracks a serial rapist whose trail has gone cold and enlists the new volunteer to the open unsolved unit patrol officer Maddie Bosch, Harry's daughter. I don't think I've read book five. I didn't remember that his daughter was a police officer too, though. Did we know that? I don't remember. Like I said, I haven't read book five yet. Those are all the books on this week's list, though. If there's any that I didn't mention and you want people to know about, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I hope you are finding one to pick up off this list, either to read, add to an overgrowing stack library. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you enjoyed this one, you can check out some of my other ones and subscribe. That way you can come back every week to find out about new books. I hope you're finding something great to read today, and I'll see you in the next one.